Welcome back to the channel. We got a huge amount of things to discuss here with the release of Warhammer 40K 11th edition. Man, that was fast, huh? Like I feel like a 10th edition was like a year ago. So obviously I'm talking about the balanced data slate. We're gonna be going over that today. Uh, this is gonna be a long one, guys. I may break this down into two videos, but I'm not quite sure. We're gonna hit the field manual first, the balanced data slate second, the designer's commentary third, the Pariah Nexus tourney pack fourth, and then after that we'll kind of try to put it all together and see where, where everything falls and what it kind of all means. So, Thunder Hammer the like button, hit Nurgle's bell icon, comment, subscribe, check out our other videos. I do need to give a quick shout out to two of our team members who went top 16 at ACO, uh, one of which was fifth. Our guy Corey White went 7-1 with Thousand Suns, so if you want to see a battle report where he plays with that list, I'll link it down below, although I think it might be slightly different. But yeah, we absolutely destroyed 500 subs, so thank you so much, guys. I'm gonna be doing a giveaway for it. That's what I've decided. I'm gonna have all the information in a video next week, but to enter, you're gonna have to leave a comment on an upcoming video, and I'll have a list of items that will be available for the winner, and they will have their choice of item. Now again, I'll have more info next week, so if you wanna get free stuff, make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell icon and all that stuff. Let's get this going. Uh, I've read some of this, but not nearly all of it, so here we go. This is gonna be a lot of times where I get real excited. So wham bam, field manatorial, manatorial man. What? All right, so let's just actually read it. Arrested Thurga and Agatha Dolan, 85 points. They were 55. Argo Flagellants, yeah, they went up a little bit. Battle Sisters went up 15. Canonus with Jump Pack went up to 75. She's got three wounds. The Castigator went up to 150. I think it was 140. The Sacrosynths went up. Dude, what? I know Sisters are really good, but mm-hmm. Demonic Fugue went up. To 85 points, uh, the Dialogus didn't change, Dogmata didn't change, Dominions didn't change, Exorcist 190, Hospitaller 50, Imagifier 65, that's like a 100% increase. Immolators are actually the same, Junith 90, I guess I'm not gonna go over the ones that didn't change. Uh, the Priest is up to 50, the Mortifiers are up to 70 from, one f from uh, 55. Morvan Vol is up to 160. I think she was 145. My God. Um, okay, so interestingly, the pa uh, the Paragon War Suits are the same as the Codex. They are still two, uh, 210. Penitent Engines are 75. Repentia is 90 or 180. <laughs> Retributors are 125. Literally everything went up. St. Celestine is 160. Why? She's not worth 160 points, unless I am missing something very obvious there. Celestine is not worth 160 points. She's worth maybe 100. Seraphim are also up to 85 from like 70. Novitiates are also up 15. The Rhino didn't change. The Triumph is up to 190. That's crazy. That's like a 30% increase. Uh, Zeraphim, Zephyrim, whichever one you want to call them. They went up 50%. This is a fucking travesty. This is fucked. We'll see where this lands, because that's a lot of points increases. So obviously all of our, everybody and their mother's reaction to this is gonna be what the fuck. But we'll have to put some lists together and see you know, what, what we can do with this and how good sisters are with all these points changes. For your enhancements, the Blade of St. Eleanor is up to 15. Litanies of Faith is the only thing that went down. It's now 10. Uh, for Hallowed Martyrs, your Chaplet of Sacrifice is up to 25, your Mantle of Ophelia is 20, Saintly Example is 10, Through Suffering Sacrifice is 25, Catechism, uh, so for Penitent Host, the Catechism of Desi Divine Print, <laughs> the Catechism is 20 points. Psalm of Righteous Judgment is 30, and the Refrain of Enduring Faith is 25. Next page, that was a lot of changes to go through for just one. Yeah, it's gonna be a long haul, guys. Custodies, all right, the Agmata Custodians, they're down to 225 for three, they're a Forge World unit, by the way. They're basically Alaris guys, but they have different guns. The Aquilion Custodians. Are these the ones that have like the fire pike spear thing? I'm not sure, I don't remember, but they are now 195 points or 3946. No, so it's these ones. The Custodian Guard with Andersite and Pithrite Spears, they're 250. Palace Grav Tank is 105. Telamon Heavy Dreadnought is 215. Venatari Custodians. They are 165 or 330, so they went down significantly. Um, and then for our shield host, the Castlin's Mark is now 20 points. Okay, Mechanicus. <laughs> 
So I glanced over the balanced data slate, and like I said, like I haven't read everything completely. I glanced over some stuff, so I know some things here and there. Admec got some huge buffs, but they also got some huge points increases. Like that defeats the purpose. <laughs> Okay, the, Ar the uh, Archaeocopter Fusilave 160, the Stratoraptor 185, the Transvector 150, the Electropriests uh, 140 for 10, the other Electropriests, so the Kupaskari, I think is how you say that, they are 140 for 10, the Fulgurite are 150 for 10. Iron Striders are up to 70, that's probably fine because they got two shots on their last cannon, so that's fine, I think. Uh, so 70 points a piece there. Castellan robots, two of them are 190, so they are 95 points a piece. The breachers, 160 for three, so uh, 320 for six. The dune crawler is 160. The sterilizers, uh, 75 or 150. The sulfur hound, 60 or 120. The Sakaran rust stalker, 75 or 150. They have like three attacks a piece now. They have a lot of attacks a piece. These Qatari Vanguard are either 90, or just 90, yeah. So this uh, Disintegrator, 175. The Dune Rider is 85. Dragoons with Radium, 55. Taser Lance Dragoon guys are 70. The Electro, or the Tech Priest Engine Seer, 60. Tech Priest Manipulus, 65. And then for your Skatari Hunter cohort, the Veiled Hunter went down to 10. Okay, so this... <sighs> A lot of stuff went up, but a lot of these did get better. Like, Rust Stalkers have better weapon skill, I believe, they can get, and they can get, they have more attacks, which is awesome, because they have dev wounds. So, but no access to reroll, so nothing insane there. Um, right, so that's your Adeptus Mechanicus. Titanicus, don't care. Eldari, so Azurman's down 115. Dark Reapers are up, so they're 170 for 10 or 85 for 5. Fire Dragons, 90 or 180. Skyweavers, 105 or 210. Or two and four. I completely missed the stuff up here. Jane Czar is 90. Karan Dress is 90. Magna Ra is 115. Munga, Mug, Magan Ra. <laughs> Swooping Hawks are 85 or 170. Void, uh, Void Weaver, 115. Viper, 75. Warp Spiders, 125 or 250. Jesus. Uh, Wraith Lord, 145. And then Yvrain is 125. So she went up a little bit. So that's your Eldar stuff. So more nerfs to Eldar. Get Get it. Forge World Point Value. Shadow Spectres, 115 or 230. Jesus Christ. All right, Agents of the Imperium, no change. Astra Militarum, Armored Sentinel, 65. Basilisk, 140. Death Strike, 145. Field Ordnance, 110. Karshkins, 110. Manticore, 175. So the reason that these are down is because Indirect Fire stuff got an even bigger nerf. It only hits on an unmodified hit roll of one, two, or of three, four, five, and six. It only hits half the time, or worse. So, yeah. Manticore down. Royal Dorn, 240. That went down? Jeez. Yeah, the Royal Dorn was already good. So, Guard getting a little bit of buffs there. The Black Templar, the Gladiator Reaper went up to 170. The uh, Valiant went up to 170 as well, so the same as the Gladiator Lancer. Okay. Blood Angels, no change. Demons, Bellacor, 325. Bloodthirster, 305. So the big guys went down. Demon Prince of Chaos, 190. With wings, 180. Demonettes are 100. Fate Skimmer is 95. Fiends, 105 or 210 for 3 and 6. Nerdlings, 40 points. Why? 40 points for 3, but 70 points for 6, or 105 for 9. Whatever, man. Plague Drones, 110 or 220, 3 and 6. And then the Skull Cannon, 95. And Soul Grinder, 180. <laughs> Ew. That thing is a 4-up invul and it's toughness 11 with 14 wounds. Why is that 180 points? <laughs> what the fuck, dude? And it's good in shooting in combat. So, yeah. You're going to see more Soul Grinders. You're going to see more Soul Grinders. Demons are good. I like demons. I think demons are good. Knight Abominant. That's the psychic one, right? Sub 400 points for a big boy baddie. That's what I'm gonna call him from now on. Big boy baddies. Thick boy baddies. Knight to spoiler, 430. The Chaos Serastus Knight Anchoron, 420. Which one is that? No one cares. The, damn, the Atropos is down to 420? Nice, I like the Atropos a lot. The Atropos is pretty sweet because it's got two guns and one of them it shoots in combat at like max shots, which is pretty sweet. The Knight Lancer is 420. 
Uh, tank shock changed, just so you guys are aware of that. Tank shock is no longer uh, based on your strength. It is based on your toughness. Uh, the Chaos Questorus Knight Sterix is 430, and Lord of Dread, Lord Dread is 25 points as one of your enhancements. Chaos Space Marines, Accursed Cultists, they went up to 180, so just a slight nerf there. They were 170 before this, when they got their actual updated points themselves. The Chaos Predator is 140, Chaos Predator Destructor 140, Vindicator 185, like why did that change? Like what the fuck? <laughs> Havocs 135, Legionaries 90 or uh, 180, five and 10. Raptors 80, or 90 and 180 for five and 10. Venom Crawler 120, Warp Talons 135 or 270. They were 220 before for 10, so that's a significant increase on the Warp Talons, so Chaos. Not liking the changes so much. Uh, Dark Angels, Deathwing Knights had to go up, I guess, so they're up to 235. The Ravenwing Dark Shroud was uh, already 115, wasn't it? I thought it was 115, but it is now, for sure, 115. Death Guard, the Putrefying Putrefier is now 60. The Blight Lord Terminators went down again. They've just been crashing in points ever since this shit came out. Blight Lord Terminators are 310 for 10 guys. They're 31 points apiece. I don't care that they don't do any damage at that point. They're just so fucking durable. They're tough as six with a four up invuln and three wounds. They are the, they're basically a custodian for 31 points in terms of durability. So that's some way to think about it. Right? The Foul Blight Spawn, the um, Flamer guy, right? He is 60 points. The Mephitic Blight Haulers went down to 90 a pop. You can take them in units of three. So it's just the same, you know, 90, 90, 90. Noxious Blight Bringer. He Lights the bringings noxiously at 45 points and the Plague Surgeons 50. Okay, nice, nice. Uh, Death Watch veterans, 200 points for 10 or 100 points for five. We're on Death Watch now. Artemis, 65, and a Watch Master is 105. Okay, I don't care. Next, Drakari. I do care about this because I love Drakari. What the fuck? Huh? What does this color mean? <laughs> All right, so the grotesque went down a little bit. They are, God, I'm not gonna do the math, but they're 80 points for three, 160 for six. The Ravager went down a little bit. I think it was 115, it's now 110. Scourges went up by, like five of them went up, but 10 of them went down? Is that how that worked? What a weird fucking thing. All right, that's Drakari. Gene Stealer Cults. Um, we're gonna have to review this codex soon. The uh, Sisters Codex is gonna come out first because I have that to review. So this will be second once I get it. Anyway, Ridge Runner 75 or 150. Ridge Runners are great. Uh, the hybrid with auto pistols, they are now 140. The icon word is 60. The jackals are 90. Why? The biophagus is 50. The clavimus is 50. The goliath rock grinders 120. The jackal alphys is 60. The color morph is 60. The locust is 45. And the magnus, magus, not the magnus, is 50. Nexos, 60, Patriarch, 85, Primus, 90. Pure Strains are 75 or 150. Um, all right, so then we have our enhancements. I don't understand this color. It's probably at the top in the legend, but I am an idiot and can't read things. So, Biosantic Surge is, uh, got some stages here. Alien Mastery, 15 points. Biomorph Adaptation, 25 points. Those are both up. Mutagenic Regen, down to 10. Predatory Instincts, down to 20. At, uh, Brood Brothers Auxilia, Adaptive Reprisal up to 15, Firepoint Commander down to 10, uh, Martial Espionage down to 25, then the Hero Returned up to 20, Host of Ascension, uh, the, uh, a Chink in Their Armor 20, Assassination Edict 15, Our Time is Nigh, uh, the, the other ones didn't change yet. Then we have the Outlander Claw, Assault Commando is 15, Cardiographic Data Leech is 10, Serpentine Tactics is 15, Starfall Shells is 10. Uh, so everything except for Serpentine Tactics went up, Serpentine went up to 15, everything else went down. Exo Creed con Congregation. I, like, I just laugh at myself because I stumble over some of these words sometimes and I don't edit it out because it's, it's just almost funny how many ridiculous things I have to say. So, like, what the fuck is this? Denunciator of Tyrants. Like, <laughs> All right, so the deeds that speak to the masses, 25 points. Gene Sire's Reliquent went down to five. So the speaking to the masses is apparently expensive to do, so it costs you $25 million. Gene Sire Reliquent is five. 
Incendiary Inspirations 15. All right, that's Gene Steeler Cults. Um, I haven't digested their codex yet, so I'm not really sure. Index Grey Knights, Castlin Crows 90, Grandmaster in Nemesis Dread Knight is 210. Regular Dread Knights are 205 now. They're all, they all went up. The Storm Raven went up to 280. What? The, I just don't understand. So flyers are some of the coolest models in the game, and they could definitely be functional if they just didn't have stupid rules. The Land Raider Redeemer went up to 285. The uh, Crusader is 220. And those are your Grey Knight changes. So for Imperial Knights, your Paladin is now 405, so an on, almost under 400. The Atropos is 425. The Lancer is 430. These are all drops, by the way. The Questorus Knight Sterix is 430, and then we have some Detachment Enhancements that went down. Mysterious Guardian, that went down to 25. And that's the one that lets you teleport. And then you have a Revered Knight that's 40, right? Mysterious Guardian, yeah, that's the one that lets you teleport. So that's pretty cool. Um, I like it. Leagues of Otan. <laughs> My army got no changes. Sweet. Necrons, very easy to go through here. Doomstalker, 145 now. It's an increase. Canoptic Wraiths, 125 or 250. That's also an increase. Orcs. Get ready to shit your pants, boys. Boss Snickerot, 95 points. Why the fuck is he 95 points? Mega knobs, just guess how many points they are. Well, I guess you can see. They're 240 for six. They were 180, now they're 240, and they lost the four up Fiona Pains. Now five up Fiona Pain. God damn it, GW, you don't know what you're doing. You, you're not supposed to change like five knobs at once. You're supposed to change one knob at once and be like, is that good enough? Maybe I changed it a little more. But now they're just like, yeah, just, you know, make it this, this way, and then do this, and then chop their dick off, and then uh, there are 260 points, too. <laughs> it's like, no one's going to run them now. <laughs> they're not good. They're no longer good. At 240 points, with a 5 of Feel No Pain for two turns in a row, I don't give a fuck. They are getting blasted off the table, even with their armor of contempt. All right, so Pain Boss, and they're so much more expensive. Pain Boss went up to 70. Pain Boy went up to 80. The Weird Boy went up to 65. All necessary changes. These just didn't need to change to a uh, five up field no pains. Really is really what that came down to. If you're gonna make them 240 points, if you're gonna make them 60 points more for a unit, so 10 points more per model, then leave their ability there. Okay, rant over, I guess. Gladiator Reaper for Space Marines. That went up to 160. The Valiant went up to 160, so they all match now. The Crusader is 220. The Land Raider Redeemer is 285. Whoops. Uh, the Repulsor is 180. That thing is cheap as shit. Uh, Storm Raven went up to 280. The Iron Storm Spearhead had two points drops. The Master of Machine War is 20 points. That's the one where you can fall back and shoot. The Target, Ar ta target Augury Web. I I'm pretty sure I fuck this up every time I try to say it. Target Augury Web is 30 points. Neither of these are an aura anymore. So that's why they went down. We'll get to that in the balance stage late. Thunderwolf Cavalry. Uh, yeah. Why did these, why did these go up, I wonder? Oh, was it because they were, like, ridiculously cheap for their points? Yes, that is why. They are now 100 or 200, um, but still very good for their points. That's, like, 33 points apiece, you know, four wounds, toughness six, I think, uh, four up in bold. Nice. Wolfen aren't good and didn't need to go up. They are 90 and 180. Tau Empire, broadsides, what the fuck was this all about? Broadsides went up to, like, 120 a model, Mmm, Whiplash. I have Whiplash. They're back to 90, uh, so that's good. That means... <laughs> All right, so they're going to be taken in big squads now. So 300 points for a big squad of them. That's a problem. What the... Wait, what? All right, so it's 90, 180, or 300, not 270. So if you take a third broadside, you're paying an extra 30 points for it. So you're actually paying 100 points for each one? I don't get it. Why aren't they just 100 points a piece? What am I missing there? I don't know. Cold Star Commander 95, Enforcer is 80. I wish something could lead broadsides. Crisis Fire Knife Battlesuits 130, the Star Scythe 110, and the Sun Forge 150. So these all, okay. Hammerhead 145, yeah. Wait, really? Then you just take the Sky Ray. Okay. Strike Team, 75. Yeah. Where is the Sky Ray anyway? Uh, Sky Ray, Sky Ray, Sky Ray. 
This just does more damage, like mathematically. It's, and it's now less points. It was a little bit more expensive than the hammerhead. Um, there's probably a, you have a choice now. They're close in points again. Oh, I have to pull the codex out. Nice that these went down. Uh, I'm most excited about the broadsides going down. It's just odd that, why do I have to pay an extra 30 points for a third model? That's very, very stupid to me. Thousand Suns, Exalted Sorcerer on disc of Zinch went down to 105. Mutalith, Mutalith Vortex Beast went down to 150. Uh, Scarab Cult Terminators went down to 190 or 380 for five and 10 respectively. You might be wondering why Thousand Suns had things go down. And that's because a lot of their stuff got changed and we'll get to that. I don't think they're totally gutted. Um, I've said from the beginning, you can go watch like my original Thousand Suns video. I said it then, I'm gonna say it now. Thousand Suns are one of those armies, they're very, very hard to play well. Um, they have a ton of tricks. They're so, there's so much that they can do that as me as the opponent, I just can't like think of all the possible things. I can't consider every possible scenario that you might be able to do. And so they're very hard to play against that. They're, they're very hard to play against because of that. So even with their changes, I think the right players will still be able to take them to good places because their changes aren't horrifically bad. Um, and some points drops because of it aren't, uh, you know, are, are nice. Um, you're not getting point drops on things that you really need, I think. You could have dropped some points in some other places. Uh, this guy got, he got changed though. So we'll get to that in just a second when we get to the uh, balanced data slate. Tyranids and then one more, I think. Biovores are 50, because these suck now. Um, Euclid spores, 30 for one, 60 for two. The Neurolictor is 90, Rippers changed. They are 25 points for one, 40 points for two, or 50 points for three. So more points for one, no change for two, less points for three. I don't get it. Turvaguns are 175. Uh, Vanguard Onslaught got a change. The Neuro Node is now down to 20 points. And then World Eaters, eight bound are down, 140 or 280. Uh, three and six, and then Exalted 8 bound, 155 or 310. Don't remember how much they were before, probably five points less or something. So that's your changes for the index here, for your uh, your Minotaurum field manual. So let's go on to the data slate because there's so much to go over here and we gotta, we gotta get through it. All right, so balanced data slate, there we go. The core rule changes, stratagems have the following. Modifying a stratagem's cost. Rules that enable you to target a unit from your army with a stratagem for zero CP, but that do not specify the name of that stratagem. For example, Captain's Right of Battle ability. Instead, reduce that CP cost of the stratagem by one. So what this means is, if you have something like Venatari, that say, you can use the Rapid Ingress stratagem, it names the stratagem, you can use that for free multiple times. And it's zero. If it's yeah, uh, the captain's dude ability that doesn't say what it is, you instead reduce it by one. If a model has a rule that would, once per battle, increase the cost of an opponent's stratagem, uh, assassin, for example, that rule is replaced by the following ability. God, Lord of Deceit, Aura, oh no. Each time your opponent targets a unit from their army with a stratagem, if that unit is within 12 inches of this model, increase the cost of that stratagem by one CP. They should have made it 18, because it should just be 18. So, all right, what this means is that you can now use your, whatever this is called, rights of battle on anything. It doesn't have to be battle tactics anymore. Huge change of the game. That right there completely changes so many things. Like that, that right there may as well be 10.5 um, 10 edition. Like that is just a massive change of the game right now. But there's so much more. So, stratagems that can be used more than once per phase. Parts of a rule that allow a player to use stratagems even if they have already targeted another unit with that stratagem in the same phase can only be used if the name of that stratagem is specified in the rule. Similarly, if a stratagem is limited to one use per player turn, fire of watch, per battle round, or per battle, such parts of that rule can only be used if the name of the stratagem is specified in that rule. So we have an example here. Space Marine Captain's right abilities reads once per battle round, one unit from your army with this ability can be targeted with a stratagem for zero CP, blah, blah, blah. As this ability does not specify the name of a stratagem, the part of the ability that modifies the CP cost of the stratagem follows the modifies a stratagem CP cost over here. And the part of this ability that would have let you use the same stratagem more than once per phase cannot be used at all. Together, these changes mean the, mean the effect of rights of battle becomes once per battle round, 
One unit from your army with this ability can use it when it is targeted with a stratagem. If it does, reduce the stratagem cost by one. Yeah, so effectively, unless it's named, you can't target them uh, for free a second time. That's why I actually use that example too. You have Venatari, they have a specific thing that names a stratagem. They can use that. You could then have an Alaris Terminator Captain attached to an Alaris squad who could then rapid ingress for free. And the reason that works is because you would target his unit first, he would use it for free, and then you would be able to use this where because they name the stratagem, the Venatari actually named the stratagem, that works for zero, and because it's naming the stratagem, I can use it again. So. Lots of text here, um, but that's effectively how that works. Stratagems that prevent units from being targeted. If a stratagem has an effect that says it can't be the target of a ranged attack unless you're within 12, or cannot be targeted by stuff within 12, you know, Halo and Soulfire, basically it's, everything has changed to 18. So you're, you can't target me unless you're within 12 inches abilities. Stratagems, they become 18 now, just all the time. So they didn't have to rewrite like 100 stratagems, they just had to add this to make it more fucking confusing. So stratagems that add new units to your army, basically restrictions are that it's once per battle now. How did I do that? I don't know what I just did. I put a strike through through it. Um, <laughs> all right, so, so our faction rules. Well, let's just take a second to digest this for a second. Any stratagems can be used by rights of battle now. You can't use the same stratagem more than once per phase unless it specifically says so. And you can't make a something, you know, it's minus one or zero if it's specifically stated. So pretty, that changes so much. These other two, not so much. I mean, there was only a couple of f detachments that had this ability and they weren't even ones that ran that ran everything. Um, I know Necrons had, their Canoptic Court has one. Gene Steelers had one and I, they think they still do. Um, there's a couple of other armies that have something like this, but they're all just 18 inches now. So not a huge change. This also only affects like three or four different factions, so also not a huge change. All this red though, this is for uh, ad mech, so there's tons and tons of stuff there. This is a seven page document at this point. Don't even get me started, I'm not even gonna get started. Adeptus Custodes Shield Host, Martial Mastery Detachment Rule. Change the first paragraph to at the start of the battle round, you can select one of the bullet points below. If you do, until the start of the next battle round, that bullet points effects apply. So basically what it should have been and the how I read, originally read it when I first looked at the, the, the Custodes detachment, I was like, this attachment's insane. Like, what are you guys talking about? And then I read it again and I was like, oh, it's once per battle. So now you get to just choose one at the start of the battle round, which is either plus one AP or criticals on five ups. Really good, especially with Venatari. <laughs> so, uh, because Venatari went down, they can all rapid ingress, they get plus one to wound, and they can be AP3 with normal, like, lethals or crit. Yeah, it's pretty good. Orc Champion's Detachment. Assemblage of Might Detachment rule change two. At the start of your command phase, select one unit from your opponent's army until the start of your next command phase. Each time a model in an Adeptus Custodes character unit from your army makes an attack that targets that enemy unit, you add one of the wound rolls. So basically, your whole unit gets the benefit instead of just the character in your unit. Mechanicus. Holy fucking shit. Doctrina Imperative Army Rule, Protector Imperative and Conqueror Imperative, way too many words, Protector Imperative. Ranged weapons equipped by models in this unit have the heavy ability. Improve the ballistic skill characteristic of ranged weapons equipped by models in this unit by one. Great. Everything is hitting on threes now. Each time a melee attack targets this unit, if this unit has the battle line keyword and or is within six inches of uh, one or more friendly Adebus Mechanicus battle line units, subtract one from the hit roll. Awesome. Conqueror Imperative. Ranged weapons of assault. Improve the weapon skill characteristic by one. Each time a model in this unit makes an attack, if it is battle line and or is within six inches of battle line, improve the armor penetration of that attack by one. Okay, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Data sheets. Add faction doctrinas uh, to the following data sheets. Oh my god. Call, corpus gari, tech priests, tech priests, tech priests. Okay, so priests. Belisarius Call got Doctrina Imperative, so they got this, basically. They got a fucking army rule, basically. Uh, call moves eight now. Uh, change his Mantra of Discipline to, this model has battle line keyword. Wait, what? Mantra of Discipline ability changed to, this model has the battle line keyword and has the following ability. Model friendly Adeptus Mechanicus unit is within six inches of this model. Each time you take a battle, sh battle shock or leadership test. I should just start calling it a battle shit test. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, I had one of your tests. Iron Strider, Ballastar, ranged weapons. They just straight up change the ranged weapons. Your twin Cognus Auto Cannons that are sustained hits one have, nev have four attacks now, like they used to. Your twin Cognus Laz Cannons have two attacks, like they used to. Your Disintegrator. It's full, uh, full Marite? Full, full Might? I don't fucking know, man. It's D6 plus one damage now, so better by one. Sicarian Infiltrator's melee weapons, they have three attacks now. The Taser Goad also has three attacks, which is much better. The Rust Stalkers, they are now strength five with five attacks and dev wounds on all their Tarsonic stuff. Uh, the Razor and Cord Claw, that's the uh, anti-infantry three plus one. That's only four attacks because you're anti-infantry and you're just messing things up at that point. The Honor Gardoon Crawler ranged weapons here, so change the Delius Missile Launcher, Eradication Beamer, Neutron Laser, and Twin Onager Phosphor Blast for profiles too. The Delius Missile Launcher, two shots of strength 10 AP2, D6 plus one damage. Anti-Fly 2 plus. Eradication Beamer, 2D3 shots. I kind of like the Eradication Beamer, but not, not when I'm getting two shots with this thing now. Hitting on threes. Uh, your Neutron Laser? Uh, maybe not. Maybe I just take the Neutron Laser. Three shots, strength 16 AP4, D6 plus two damage. Onager Heavy Phosphor Blaster, that's like double the amount of shots. Strength 6 AP1, two damage. Ignores cover, twin linked. So basically AP2 there. The Neutron Laser, that's getting me hard. Uh, three shots of strength 16, AP4, and D6 plus two damage. All right, so that's, you have an entire page dedicated to Admech, because they were like, you're so bad. All right, Eldari, same, uh, same. I'm just kind of rolling through these here. Yep, you get nine, this is minus two instead of half, or whatever it did before. In each of your turns, this is for the Incarn. Uh, Wraith Constructs. Can only target eligible units and the things that shot you. Okay, so that's Eldar. They didn't get any changes to that. Uh, Agents of the Imperium, Exaction Squads. Uh, they, I think, are the same. War Gear. This is different. They can have... They, you can have two guys with guns now. All right, Militarum. Officer models from army can issue orders. That was the same. Officers can issue orders if they... If I blow up your transport, you can just issue an order immediately. Weird little thing there. Uh, born soldiers, each time a regiment unit from your army makes a ranged attack that targets a visible unit, excluding monsters and vehicles, it has lethal hits. Each time a squadron unit makes a ranged attack that targets a monster or vehicle, it has lethal hits. Nice. This is great. You don't have to stay still anymore. So remember when I said that you had a terrible army rule and that it was useless because when you do the worst possible thing, which is stay still, then you get your ability? Yeah, they, they agreed with me and they said, we're just gonna give it to you all the time. So Kevin was right, which doesn't happen very often, let's be clear. Uh, Black Templars, what the heck? Transport capacity of seven, Phobos infantry. Okay, so for some reason, the Impulsor changed to seven. There's probably like a, <laughs> I wonder if it's because of Helbrecht, a Lieutenant and five sword brethren. I just <laughs> wanna get into this thing and just hurt people's brains. Um, Repulsor, 14 instead of 12. At least I think it was 12. Sons of Sanguinius, that's the same. Plus two to your strength and plus one to your attacks. Chaos Knights, this is hilarious, guys. Each time a model with this ability makes a no so this is super heavy walker. Each time a model with this ability makes a normal advance or fallback move, it can move through models, excluding Titanics, and sections of terrain features that are four inches or less in height. When doing so, it can move with an engage range of enemy models, but cannot end that move with an engage range of them. It can also move through sections of terrain features that are more than four inches in height, but if it does, after it moves, roll a d6 on a one that moder that on a one that model is battle shocked. Who fucking cares? I can move through walls. I can Kool-Aid man through walls, and I don't have to spend a strat on it anymore. This only works on the big ones, so you still have to use the Kool-Aid man strat on the war dogs, um, which is they're still very very good. Um, you know, if you're playing the Chaos Knights competitively, you're not actually taking a big knight. Um, but I don't play them competitively because I just have regular knights, so I just play them for fun. I just proxy because I'm a fucking heathen. But yeah, this is, just, just makes me happy because I do run a couple big ones and I like being able to just charge through walls and, uh, I just wish all vehicles could do this. Just make this a universal rule for the whole thing. Chaos Space Marines, Warp Talons, at the end of the fight phase, if this unit destroyed one or more enemy units this phase and it's not within a gauge range, then you can pick it off the table. Probably a good change, because they were just completely ridiculous. Like, how do these books get written, dude? I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. You have rules from other editions that were just completely fucking broken, and then 
someone somewhere in some room or at some cubicle writes this r the same rule and nobody's like, yeah, we shouldn't actually do that because it's cancer. And I wish that it was. Chaos Demons, this is also very good. While an enemy unit is within your army shadow of chaos and or if it is within six inches of one or more bloodthirsters, great and clean ones, Chaos Fate Weaver, Keeper of Secrets, Lord of Change, Rodigus, Slakshi, Scarbrand. Each time that unit makes a battle shock test, subtract one from the test. If it's failed, suffer D through mortal wounds. Basically, all the greater demons, named or otherwise, gained a six inch aura of your in your shadow of chaos. Or shadow of terror, whatever the hell it's called. And then you have your demonic pact rule. In addition, for each of the following keywords, the number of non battle line units with that keyword that you can include this way. So that's the same. Demonic incursion. This is also silly. Each time Legiano's Legion, Legion's Demonica unit from your army is set up on the battlefield using Deep Strike, if it's set up wholly within your army's Shadow of Chaos, and or if it is set up, set up wholly within six inches of one or more friendly Bloodthirster, Great and Clean One, all that same stuff, with which it shares, you know, the, the tag, uh, it can be set up six inches horizontally from all enemy models instead of nine. So basically, the, your Greater Demons give off an aura of terror now. You can just Deep Strike near them. Super duper good, crazy nonsense. All right, so Bloodthirster Scarbrand, Greater Demon of Corn. While a friendly Corn Demon unit is within six inches of this model, it's within your, arm, your Shadow of Chaos. So yeah, it basically just gives it. I didn't actually see this part, but it, it literally just gives it to you. Great and Clean One Rodigus, you're in the Shadow of Chaos within six inches of them. Chaos Fate Weaver, Lord of Change, you're within your Shadow of Chaos if you're within six inches of them. And it's literally just within. It's not even wholly within. So kind of silly. Keeper of Secrets, same deal there. Uh, let's, so Dark Angels then. Grim Resolve, in your command phase, select one and Deptus to start as unit from your army until the start of your next command phase. Add one to the objective control characteristic of models in that unit. I'm pretty sure that I said that like when I made that index or that codex review. I was like, can we like just get this too? Like, is that too much to ask? This might actually be not a bad detachment rule if that's the case, but I'm pretty sure in that video I wanted it on everything. Just plus one OC on your entire army, uh, which is probably too good. But yeah, uh, cool. Inner Circle Task Force, the Vowed Target Detachment. At the start of your movement phase, select one of the following. Defensive footing. Select one objective marker you control until the start of your next movement phase. That objective marker is your Vowed Objective Marker. Ag aggressive push. Select one objective marker that you do not control until the start of your next movement phase. Select one or more objective markers you do not control. Until the end of your next movement phase, each of those objective markers is one of your Vowed... Is one of your Vowed Objective Markers, yeah. If a rule refers to a unit or a model being within range of your vowed objective markers, that rule takes effect if that unit or model is within range of one or more of your vowed objective markers. I'll have to reread what they get. Each time a Deathwing infantry unit from your army makes an attack that targets a unit within range of one or more of your vowed objective markers, add one to the wound roll. So I think it was only on your Deathwing, right? Yeah, I think it's only on the Deathwing, which wasn't too much. Um, but I sure do like plus one to wound Land Raider Redeemers and things like that. That seems pretty cool because Land Raiders get this ability. Uh, I think Dreadnoughts, Terminators, um, Blade Guard Veterans, like all the elite stuff got this. So that's interesting. Um, all right, Deathwing Knights, Mace of Absolution, Anti-Monster, Anti-Vehicle 4-Up. It's now AP 2. A Power Weapon is now Damage 2. It's only Damage 1 before. 5 Attack, Strength 6, AP 2, 2 Damage. Not bad. And then your inner circle companion melee weapons. So uh, this is what they get. They are, I think these are on like the blade guard guys. Yeah, the inner circle companions, they're like basically blade guard. They either have lethal hits with AP two, two damage, strength six, four attacks, or they have sustained hits two with five attacks, strength six, AP two, and one damage. Death guard. During the clear battle formation, to the end of the battle, yeah. Yep, so this is the same where they can either make you minus one OC, minus one save, or minus one your weapon skill and ballistic skill. Change the parentheses at the end of the current rule to so enemy units within contagion range of it will have their characteristics modified. Okay, yeah, no shit. You're yeah. Why do they have to? This doesn't need to be this bloated. This just doesn't need to be this way. Eighth edition, guys. Eight pages of rules of like how to play the game. We get this fucking shit. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Uh, explosive maladies on your biologist putrefier. That's the same. You can only use uh, one model from your army to do those. Death watch. Um, all right. So bolt weapons for your stuff. So that's unchanged. Drakari. 
Uh, that's unchanged. That's unchanged because you can attach the Incubi now. Gene Steelers, nothing. Literally, it says none. Grey Knights, the Vortex of Doom. Okay, so this changed. Uh, in your shooting phase, select an enemy with an 18 invisible to the Psyker, excluding units with a lone operative that are not part of an attached unit and are not within 12 inches of the Psyker. If you do, then you do the thing. Uh, Nemesis Dread Knight, this has ignores cover and psychic still. That's on a three still, AP3 is nice. Great Sword, twos, those are the same Imperial Knights. Um, you can reroll one hit roll and one wound roll, same thing there. So this is the same as well, only the armature is affected. These guys can move through models and sections of terrain features that are four inches or less in height, or they can, you know, you, so you can move over guys basically, you just can't end within engage range, and you can move through walls as long as you don't roll ones and you become battle shocked. Uh, Noble Lance Detachment, Trophies Claim, that's 2CP, Vigilant Last Stand, 2CP, why do they need to be 2CP? Leagues of Otan, Unchanged? Unchanged. I love Leagues of Otan, they are such an OP army and nobody plays them. Necrons, you got one change, it's to Cosmic Precision, you can't target your monsters anymore, get fucked. Uh, I'm also a Necron player, so I guess I'll fuck myself. Orcs, Green Tide, you got a 6-up invuln now. Each time an attack targets a boy's unit from your army that has 10 or more models, you get a 5-up invuln. The Tide of Muscle, you, you basically change it to add one to the charge roll if your unit contains 10 or more models. Uh, otherwise, you can... No, so, plus one to charge, and then... Okay. I think this is a stratagem. It's a Tide of Muscle stratagem. It literally says stratagem, and I can't read. So this is the one that gave you, like, plus one to the charge roll for each turn, I think. This adds plus one to the charge roll, and if your unit contains 10 or more models, you can re-roll it. So it's always the same now. Okay. Go get them. Stratagem. After an attack, after the attacking unit has shot, your unit can make a go get a move. Move to do so. Roll a d6. Each model in your unit can move the that distance. Must end as close as possible to the closest enemy unit. When doing so, those models can be moved within engagement range. If your unit contains 10 or more models, you can re-roll the d6 to determine how far you move. All right, and then Mega Knobs. Got fucked and got a 5-up feeling of pain, which is still good, but not for 260 points for 6. Um, I, I just don't think they're there anymore. Space Marines. Spez Marines. So your target augury web enhancement. Basically, you pick a something now, and it, it ha doesn't have an aura in your mo anymore. You pick something in your command phase until the start of your next command phase, and it has lethal hits. Master of Machine War, same deal. In your command phase, select a vehicle. It can fall back or advance. And still shoot. Mercy is weakness. Now 2 CP. That's the one where I shoot back at you, I think. Mm, that might be the one where you get crits. Yeah, I think that's the one where you get crits. I'm bad with the names. I, I remember what they do, what the strats do, and how much they cost, but I just can't remember the names. Gotta make room in my brain for all the fucking rules here. So Desolation, no, don't care. Um, pulsers are now 7. Yeah, interesting. Uh, repulsors is now 14. Cool. Space Wolves, I don't care. At the start of the battle round, select one of the sagas listed below. Okay. I don't think this changed. This did get much better. Uh, actual Space Wolf detachment, but I still just don't think that it's great. So, kill characters, you get cool stuff, you get sustained hits. If you control your opponent's objective marker with a character, like when do these happen? At the end of each player's turn. So that's doable, because at the end of my turn I can control it and then give everything plus one OC. So this, these are pretty good, but we're not going to go over them too much here. They didn't change, so maybe I'll make a, another Space Wolf video at some point. Tau, didn't change. Thousand Suns, so this is, look at all this. Cabal of Sorcerer, Army Roll. Change the last sentence of the first paragraph, too. Each time you use a ritual, select one Thousand Sun Psyker model from your army, excluding models that have already been selected for this rule this turn. So you basically can't use it twice on the same guy. Twist of Fate was the thing that it just deleted your armor save. In your shooting phase, pick an enemy unit with an 18 invisible to the Psyker until the end of the phase. Each time a Thousand Suns model from your army makes a ranged attack that targets that unit, improve the armor penetration of that attack by two. So it doesn't take away your save anymore, it just makes you plus two AP. It's still very, very strong, and you still have dev wounds on a lot of stuff. We'll have to see how impactful this is, because it is very impactful. You go from pretty much being able to uh, auto-delete units and know it, to not knowing now, because your opponent's going to get a save. It's going to be a bad save, but they're going to get a save. So, not so sure on that one. Uh, Doom Bolt, pick something with an 18, excluding units with a lone operative and that are, not a part, uh, that are not part of an attached unit and are not within 12 inches of the Psyker. 
the unit suffered on a one, you suffer D3 mortal wounds. Two to five, you suffer D3 plus three. On a six, it suffers D, uh, D3 plus six. Temporal Surge. This also changed, so the, the very bottom of it changed. The same unit cannot be selected for this ritual more than once per phase. Then our data sheets. Exalted Sorcerer on disc. In your shooting phase, after this model has shot, select one enemy unit, excluding monsters and vehicles, hit by one or more of those attacks, made with its arcane fire, until the start of your next turn. That enemy unit is pinned. While it's pinned, subtract two from its move and two from its charge rolls. So, much worse there. We're on the last page, finally. I think we're still uh, sub an hour here, which is what I was aiming for. Tyranids, army rule, synapse. That's what it does. While a Tyranid's unit from your army is within a synapse range of your army, each time that unit takes a battle shock test, take it on 3d6 instead of 2d6. Each time a model that unit makes a melee attack, add one of the strength characteristic of that attack. That's new, right? Okay. Shadow in the warp. Each time an enemy unit takes a battle shock test, if it's within six inches of one or more synapse units from your army, subtract one from the test. Crusher stampede. Uh, so they get their same sh shitty thing. In addition, while a Tyranid monster or unit from your army, excluding Battleshock units, is that starting strength, add two to the objective control characteristic of that unit. Wow, that's really good. If you're only at starting strength, you get plus two to your OC. Whoa, wow, I can't believe that's so good. It should have been the opposite. It should have been while it's under starting strength that gets plus two OC. But what the fuck do I know? Untrammeled feroci ferocity. Change the effect to this. Each time a model in your unit makes a normal advance or fallback move, it can move through models, excluding Titanic, and sections of terrain features that are four inches or less in height. When doing so, it can move through, okay, interesting. When it can move through enemy models, but it cannot end with an engagement range. It can also move through sections of terrain features that are more than four inches in height, but if it does so, roll the dice on a one, it's battle shocked. Okay. I don't remember what this does, but it, it must allow your big boys to move through stuff. So the Hive Tyrant, Onslaught Psychic Thing, while well, a friendly Tyranid unit is within six, ranged weapons equipped by models have salt and a lethal hits. Sure. Um, Tyranids need some help, so I'm cool with that. That's fine. Add Synapse to the Nero Lictor. It's got the word Nero in its name, and it didn't have Synapse. I love this company. Nero Tyrant, uh, this gained the Zone Thropes cue. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it gained the ability to attach to Zone Thropes. Thank God. Broodlord and Parasite of Moriag, Mortex, the, yeah. It has Shadow in the Warp, because it didn't have that before? Okay. Keywords, and the following is both data sheets. Synapse, Moloch, um, it gained the Vanguard. Okay, so these three, Moloch, Ravener, and Trigon, they all gained Vanguard Invader. That's interesting. That might make Vanguard Invader somewhat interesting to play. Maybe we'll have to take a second look at that. So that's a Vanguard Invader, pretty cool. Bioplasmic Cannon, Strength 9, AP3, 3 damage. Mm, they should have made it Strength 10. They should have made this Strength 10 and made the number of shots less. It should have been like D6 plus 1 shots or maybe just D6, but I like D6 plus 1. Strength 10, AP3, damage 3. I think that would have been fine. Tyran effects and maybe a, a points bump then. Or maybe just keep this the fucking same, make the Strength 10, give it a points bump. I don't know, it's like 130 points. Tyrant effects, the ranged weapon thing, this is now D6 plus 6 damage. Don't know how much it was before off the top of my head, but that's what it is now. Pretty sure these didn't change, the world eaters. Add one of the attacks and damage characteristic of the bear's melee weapons. I think that was the same. Attacks and damage. It might have just been attacks before and now it's attacks and damage. Uh, this is still once per battle. And then, uh, yeah, this is only a 5 up invuln unless you have one, and then it's a 4 up invuln for your demon prince ability. Holy shit, guys. All right, that, that was the balanced data slate. We still have a couple of more things to cover. We're not gonna do it in this video. We're gonna do it in the next video, but we're gonna be covering the designer's commentary and because there's a ton of changes in there, which we're gonna give even more credence to the fact that this is basically just 11th edition. And then we're also gonna go over the Pariah Nexus tournament pack because there's a whole bunch of stuff in there with terrain layouts and measurements and all kinds of fun stuff. So, thunder, hammer the like button, subscribe to the channel, Check out our other videos, Nurgle, the bell icon, on whatever. <laughs> buttons, 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 just do all the buttons. You guys are awesome, as always. And with that, guys and gals, I am going to head on out of here and rewrite all of my lists like I have to do every three fucking months. So I'm gonna go do that, click all the buttons, and I'll see you guys in the next video.